Main Street. It's not so very different from thousands like it all over the United States. Smaller, perhaps, than some you've known, yet large enough to service the needs of the local population. It has a modern drugstore where you can find hundreds of items from aspirin and razor blades to Cokes and chocolate sundaes. As usual, it's the favorite hangout for the younger set who spend their leisure time indulging in laughter, calories, and that great American institution, the jukebox. There's a department store. Featuring the latest spring fashions. A hardware store. They're offering a special on gardening tools today. A library. And a church. Strangely enough, its doors are always locked. But there are many strange things about this town. Even a casual observer would note the utter cleanliness of the streets and houses. He would also receive the impression that everything in town was brand new, as though it had sprung up overnight. A closer examination of the inhabitants would reveal that all of them seemed to be in their early 20s. Policemen, businessmen, mechanics. Even more unusual is the absence of older people and children. No matter where you look, there aren't any children. Yet, the population seems large enough and busy enough. Most of the activity seems to center around the campus of a small college that is located in the center of town. As a matter of fact, the town is merely an extension of these classrooms. This is no ordinary school. The students here have been handpicked from thousands of applicants all over the country. Although they may come from different walks of life, certain characteristics are common to all. They are brilliant and determined. We turn now to the subject of motor travel in the United States of America. You will find that as you drive from city to city, that few Americans any longer use the centralized hotels which have been a part of their past. Instead, they use small places of residence on the outskirts of cities, on the main highways, which are called motels, motor hotels, motor courts, and the like. But first, before going into this subject more in more detail, we will see a short training film in which you will see demonstrations of devices which have been used successfully in the past, as well as some of the latest models that are available. Pay close attention. This is a typical American motel. They can be found all over the United States. Since most Americans use automobiles as their basic mode of transportation, motels have become very popular. Because of the luxurious facilities that most motels offer, even those who travel by rail or air seem to prefer them to the ordinary hotels that are found near transportation terminals. As you can see, the interior of this room offers many opportunities for the use of surreptitious listening devices. A few years ago, 
The only devices available to us were tiny microphones, which could be installed behind the walls or under the floors. However, the installation of these microphones took time, and the accompanying wire made them susceptible to discovery. Today, we are no longer faced with that problem. To the unpracticed eye, there is nothing suspicious about this room. Nevertheless, these men are, for all practical purposes, speaking directly into a microphone. As part of the decor, most motel rooms display inexpensive lithographs enclosed in a simple frame. This one, however, is used to camouflage one of the simplest devices available. Enclosed within the frame, behind the print, is a complete battery-operated microphone and transmitter. There are no wires or buttons visible. The batteries can operate continuously for more than 200 hours and are easily obtained. The advantages that this unit possesses are obvious. A new picture can simply be exchanged with one already in the room, or if time permits, the existing picture can be utilized by inserting the transmitter kit into the frame. Three-fourths of an inch is the minimum thickness of frame that is required for installation. Reception is usually excellent, no matter where the voices are located in the room. Uh, on that production figure for DC, I have the estimated daily production of three. What do you show unit cost at? The estimated unit cost? The second one down. Is uh, $5,245. Not only can a conversation be plainly heard, but a permanent record made, one that can be used for future reference simply by using this small tape recorder in conjunction with the rest of the equipment. The listener doesn't have to be close to the transmitter. He can be a block away, sometimes up to a quarter of a mile away, if conditions are just right. A passerby would notice nothing out of the ordinary here just a motorist checking his route on a road map. Appearances can deceive. That hearing aid in his ear is actually wired to a tiny receiver, which allows him to hear what is being said in the motel room. I think they should. A permanent record of the conversation can be made under these circumstances just as easily as if he were hidden from view. The recorder can be hidden quite simply, as this man has done. There is enough wire on the spools to record continuously for four hours if necessary. Volume controls are simple to make. However, entry is not necessary in order to hear what is being said within a room. If the wall is so thick that the sound waves are blurred or otherwise indistinct, a long metal probe can be attached to the mic and pushed through the inner wall to the inside of the wall of the other room. The vibrations then pass from the wall through the probe to the microphone, clearly reproducing any sounds emanating from the next room. The contact microphone has other uses. Because of its small size, it is easily concealed and can be used even in public with success. It is a simple matter to lean against a telephone booth without attracting attention. The microphone is simply carried in a coat or trouser pocket and pressed against the glass. The conversation can be heard clearly by the listener. The microphone is used in conjunction with a receiver that may be located either on the body of the carrier or positioned some distance away. These are only a few of the devices that are available. Let's look at them again. The picture frame transmitter. It can transmit all the sounds in an average room as far as a quarter of a mile under optimum conditions. The contact microphone with different sized probes. It may be used with or without the probes and will faithfully reproduce all the sounds within an average room. Wristwatch mic. It will pick up a voice clearly up to a distance of 12 feet.
the tie clasp microphone. Its range is also 12 feet. These small microphones will reproduce all sounds in an average sized room. This wire recorder can operate continuously for four hours. The small tape recorder, which can fit into a shirt pocket, can record continuously for one hour. These are some of the tools of your trade. Weapons of democracy. Learn them well. After lunch, you will have an opportunity to try each of the devices which you saw in the film. We'll take each of them in turn, learn what makes them work, and then practice the different installations. It is now 12 o'clock. Class is dismissed until 1. No, this is no ordinary college. The curriculum offers conventional courses in American history, geography and chemistry, plus some in photographic techniques, electronics, encrypting and decoding, and lab courses in the use of explosives. The students you see here had to pass some of the most difficult entrance exams in the world. They are a special group. They have to be. The rest of the town's population is just as special. The entire town is a duplicate of what you would find all over the United States. It has modern stores, familiar brand names. The menus offer nothing but standard American dishes. The theater shows the latest Hollywood productions. But it's completely isolated from other population centers. and entirely surrounded by barbed wire and armed guards. It's called Winitsa and is located in the central Ukraine, one of the southern Soviet socialist republics. The entire town is a huge school designed to train Soviet youth how to live, think, and react like their American counterparts. They drive American cars and obey American traffic regulations. They follow the latest news of America from sports to Hollywood scandals. Their English is not only flawless, but they specialize in dialects and accents. All of the inhabitants in town are instructors. They coach the students how to conduct themselves. They're even taught how to buy like an American. The only genuine feature about Winita is the fence that surrounds it. Winita, school for spies, small town USSR.